Giraffes are one of the world's most well-known and popular animals, famed for their towering height, standing up to 5.5 meters or 18 feet tall, overlooking every other animal on the African plains. It's hard to imagine these creatures as anything but the skyscrapers of the animal kingdom. But you'll be surprised to know that our modern giraffes only represent one form in a family containing species of a variety of shapes and sizes. You need only look to the giraffe's close cousin, the elusive rainforest-dwelling okapi, to see that the range of this group's appearances can be very broad. But believe it or not, giraffes and their relatives can look even stranger. Meet Shivatherium, a close relative of the giraffe and okapi. At first glance, you'd be forgiven for mistaking this for some kind of moose, but rest assured, this is one of the most fascinating giraffe relatives to have ever existed. This creature alongside giraffes and okapis are members of the family Giraffidae. This is a group of artiodactyls which evolved in the early Miocene, some 20 million years ago, with their ancestors splitting off from a line of ungulates whose descendants led to the family Antilocapridae. Today, this clade contains only one species, the pronghorn. This is all to point out that, strangely enough, this animal known from Western North America is actually the closest living relative of the African giraffe and okapi. But pronghorns and their extinct relatives are a unique group of animals deserving of their own separate video. For now, let's hone into Giraffidae once more. Despite the variation present within this family, giraffids have several unifying characteristics. Dr. Chris Basu spells these out in his article on giraffids, where he mentions that these include a long, black, prehensile tongue, as well as canines with two lobes. But by far, one of the most notable differentiating factors of giraffids, when compared to other artiodactyls, comes in the form of their horns, which aren't really true horns, but bony protrusions with a skin and hair covering known as ossicones. Ossicones aren't a uniquely giraffid trait. The closely related Climacoceratidae and Paleomyrcidae both possess these features. That said, Climacoceratids had ossicones that branched off in a manner similar to the antlers of a deer, while Paleomyrcids, while having regular-looking ossicones, also possessed additional bony structures seen in the Xenocarex from the Miocene. Crazy-looking stuff. But not to be done by these flashy ungulates, our main star, Shivatherium, has a couple of fascinating features of its own. This animal, evolving around 7 million years ago toward the end of the Miocene, was a giraffid like few others. And its initial discovery actually makes for a bit of a funny story. When the creature was first found in 1836, the paleontologists who saw those fossils thought they had uncovered an incredibly important link in the history of mammalian classification. Quoting from what the scientists Hugh Falconer and Proby Thomas Cotley wrote, well, technically I'm quoting this Nat Geo article by Riley Black that quotes them, but you get the point. The fossil which we were about to describe forms a new accession to extinct zoology. This circumstance alone would give much interest to it. But in addition, the large size surpassing the rhinoceros, the family of mammalia to which it belongs, and the forms of structure which it exhibits render the Shivatherium one of the most remarkable of the past tenants of the globe that have hitherto Did you seriously just say hitherto been detected in the most recent strata. A major goal that many zoological researchers of the time had was to find connecting links between various groups of animals. Note that this term is a bit different than the missing link phrase most of us are familiar with. A connecting link was more so an animal that could quote unquote fill in the gaps between groups of animals within the fossil record. And so Shivatherium was proposed to be a connecting link between hoofed mammals such as deer and antelope as well as oddly enough the pachyderms. Pachydermata is the name of a group that, especially in olden times, got thrown around a lot, but one that has little phylogenetic value. Instead, as was characteristic of a lot of taxonomy in those days, it was a collection of animals with similar attributes, including the elephants, rhinos, and hippos, with little regard to their actual evolutionary history. They shared thick skin, as the group's name suggests, as well as a large body size. That latter part made researchers really insistent on claiming Shivatherium as a connecting link, as its bones were described as robust, and as we've already seen, its size was, quote, surpassing the rhinoceros. But surely size alone wouldn't be enough to qualify Shivatherium as some sort of missing piece to these guys' puzzle, right? Well, that's where things get really weird. See, this animal possessed a recessed nasal cavity, and these scientists believe that, similar to what was the case in elephants and tapirs, this was indicative of a trunk of all things. I know it seems that we're already losing the plot, but there was still more rationale behind this all. The larger an animal got, they argued, the more unique ways they need to figure out how to get food to their mouth. This all sounds like a stretch, but as someone with a lot of experience writing essays for high school and college, I can't blame a guy for wanting to make a connection where there probably isn't one. And I tried to find an illustration of this animal depicted with a trunk, but my search came up empty. The best I can give you is this crummy drawing I made. As more research was done on the animal and more fossils of the creature were found, the picture did end up becoming clearer. 
This was not some connecting link or something even remotely related to a pachyderm. And as researchers of the time noted, it wasn't quite an antelope either as its rear pair of ossicones were described as quote, a peculiarity not to be paralleled amongst any existing antelope save the abnormal prong buck of North America. More on those ossicones later, but it's neat to see that even back then scientists could see the links between Antilocapridae and Giraffidae. But by the end of the 19th century, the connecting link theory was a distant memory, and even its close alliance with antelopes was called into question. It was around this time that the beast was instead generally agreed upon to be a giraffe relative. And as for its purported trunk, it's just got a big nose, bro. With that, we can finally start talking about the real Shiva Ethereum. As said before, this animal evolved in the Miocene. And while its earliest fossils were found in India, where it was discovered near the Himalayan foothills, the remains of the creature were found in Africa and Eurasia as well. There are several species of Shivatherium across its range, with Shivatherium giganteum being the largest. Shivatherium was tall, with a shoulder height of 2.2 meters or 7.2 feet, and a total height up to the head of 3 meters or 9.8 feet. Despite being a cousin of the giraffe, it lacked its trademark long neck and legs. And unlike the earlier ancestors of both it and giraffes, it lacked their slender, almost gracile form. This was very much a stocky, thick-set animal, with a short, robust neck and muscular limbs. The exact size of Shivatherium is an interesting talking point. We know just by looking at the fossils of this thing that it was big. But the question remained, was this just a super heavy giraffe relative? Or did this beast, as some suggested, really reach elephantine sizes, pushing the limits of how big a ruminant could get? This is precisely what our friend Basu from earlier wanted to investigate in a January 2016 article. My dude is really living up to his fan of giraffe's descriptor on his Twitter bio, I respect it. And as the title suggests, this study is meant to give us an up-to-date analysis on the true size of this ancient animal. Basu and his colleagues' methodology differed from previous strategies used to calculate the total mass of the type species Shivatherium giganteum. Prior to this, Shivatherium size was calculated using bivariate scaling, that is, scaling that uses the relationship between the bones of the animal as well as ecologically or morphologically similar animals. The problem was that this type of scaling was highly variable, evident in the wide disparity in mass estimates in Shivatherium from that study, 1,230 to 3,720 kilograms, or about 2,711 to 8,201 pounds. Instead, Basu's group opted for a volumetric approach. There's a whole bunch of little steps the researchers took in order to go about doing this, but to keep things simple, they effectively created a 3D model of Shivatherium's potential skeleton and then wrapped a volume around it, making sure to take into account the logical flesh and musculature of the animal. But these guys also made sure to do their own bivariate scaling as a point of comparison. In order to make this calculation, they used the animal's humerus as well as a previously used regression model. Through their humeral circumference scaling, they found the animal had a mass of 3,000 kilograms or 6,613 pounds, which was far larger than what they found through their volumetric method, with those mass numbers settling in around 1,246 kilograms or about 2,746 pounds. I don't need to tell you how wildly different these numbers are, but to put things into perspective, this reduces the animal's mass from being in the range of a rhinoceros down to being the size of a larger bovid like a bison or a gar. So in the end, it looks like Falconer and Cotley were even wrong about this animal exceeding the size of a rhino. But hold on a sec, because as this article also points out, that estimate excludes the weight of those giant ossicones on its head. I mean, it's still not reaching the rhino size, but you know, it's, it's something else. It's, it's a little something else. But speaking of its ossicones, neither the giraffe nor the okapi can claim to share Shivatherium's formidable headwear. As if to challenge its relatives outside of Giraffidae, Shivatherium's ossicones had a large, almost extravagant form. Actually, they possess four ossicones, but no one's looking at the two above their eyes. Rather, most of our attention is probably going to the giant pair further up on its head. Now let me be the first to point out that the presence of non-traditional ossicones isn't as exclusive to Shivatherium as you might think. This was a trait present in earlier members of its subfamily Shivatherinae, such as Brahmatherium, which evolved around the same time. But while the ossicones of that animal are intriguing in their own right, there's something about Shivatherium's back pair that make it particularly unique in Giraffidae. And that uniqueness might be, ironically enough, how similar they were to another hoofed mammal. You don't need to look close to realize where the constant comparison this animal gets to the moose comes from. Put side to side, the resemblance is uncanny. And these things were big. Each one of them measured 70 centimeters or 28 inches. And while we don't have an exact weight estimate, we do know that they must have been fairly heavy and were probably the reason for Shivatherium's extremely muscular and short neck. 
The appearance of these ossicones has been a far less contentious subject of debate, but you will notice slightly different interpretations of it depending on the illustration. Some depicted with a smooth surface, again very similar to what we see with moose antlers, but others will give it little tufts of hair at the end, like what we see in modern giraffe ossicones. As for the purpose of these structures, we don't know for sure, but it's not crazy to assume that they could be used for fighting with other males of the species, since that's what they're used for in giraffes today. Of course, rather than the necking that giraffes are known for, sparring matches would probably be more in line with what we see in deer and antelope. That's speculation on my part though, more because I really, really do not want to imagine slamming that freaking thing against someone else's neck. Oh my god, bro. You could do so many neck curls. Oh, it's actually making me cringe think about it. It's not going to matter how thick your neck is. Ugh. Ugh. And that could be exactly what the predators of its region may have thought. While the large size of mature Shivatherium individuals alone would be an effective deterrent, it could potentially also use their ossicones as a defensive tool. Today's giraffes are known to be browsers, but dentition analysis by Tamara and colleagues in a 2004 study showed that various species of Shivatherium were actually mixed feeders. They'd likely find plenty of grasses and foliage in the environments they could be found in, which range from savannas to woodlands. We mentioned that older individuals were likely safe from predators, but young members would be in danger from contemporary large cats such as Dinophilus megantarion. Shivatherium, according to the current fossil data, went extinct sometime around the early Pleistocene, anywhere from 700,000 to 1 million years ago, with climate change as the likely culprit, specifically due to the expansion of grasslands, a result of dropping CO2 levels between the Pliocene and Pleistocene. This shift favored tropical grasses over trees, and while Shivatherium wasn't an exclusive browser, it did rely a lot on woody vegetation as part of its diet. Its extinction was seen to fall in line with that of a lot of other mega herbivores during this period. But in a strange turn of events, perhaps Shivatherium hung around a lot longer than we might have expected. There's a surprising amount of evidence that seemed to depict members of this genus in different parts of Asia. Cave paintings in India along the Maharashtra Madhya Pradesh border, dated to be around 15,000 years old, depict an animal that looks very similar to Shivatherium. Furthermore, ancient artifacts found in Iraq from the Sumerian city of Kish also seem to depict this very animal. These date back to around 8,000 years ago, which would put the beast's date of extinction well into the Holocene. But it should be noted that there's no fossil evidence that actually supports an extinction date that recent. And it's very likely that the animals of those depictions could be of a related species altogether, rather than Shivatherium itself. Shivatherium was a truly fascinating animal that showed us just how weird giraffes and their relatives could get. Its history from its classification as a connection between antelopes and elephants, to the debates about how big it could get, to the weird nature of its moose-like ossicones, was an eventful one. But cool as this animal may have been, let's not have that take away from the fact that we still have two giraffids alive today. And I was waiting until the end to pop this news, but even though Shivatherium was pretty big, the giraffe is still likely bigger. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for watching my video. As usual, all the research I put in this video is going to be linked in the description down below. There's a lot of interesting studies here that I do recommend you read for yourself to get more information. But as usual, if you like this video, make sure to give it a like, make sure to subscribe and comment and all that good stuff. I'll see you guys next time.